So in today's video, I'm going to discuss a topic which is often brought up by graduate students. And this topic is often brought up somewhere in the middle of their PhD program. And this question they ask is, why is the PhD degree so difficult? And this comes to the students because most of the students who pursue a PhD are some of the best students in their field. And they have typically got very good grades in their bachelor's degree curriculum. They have done very well in their master's program. They have some experience in terms of writing a thesis in many cases for the master's program and doing project work for the bachelor's program. Then why do they encounter so much difficulty in the PhD program? So I will talk about some of these aspects today and I will try to address some of these issues so you know beforehand about some of the problems you are likely to face in the PhD program and you need to be sufficiently resilient and strong in mind so as to take up these particular problems. So let's start with the training that occurs right at the bachelor's and master's degree phases. So essentially when you are in the bachelor's degree phase, you learn knowledge from books and from lectures presented by the professors in the class. And typically you take notes for these lectures, you read the books and then you prepare for the examinations. So there are also a variety of homework problems which are there, there are tutorials, there are mid-semester exams, there are final exams and so on. And all these exams are supposed to check your retention of the topics which are covered in the class. So essentially this whole exercise is an exercise on memory and retention and understanding the material which is presented in the class and which is presented in the books and the tutorials. So again, at this point, the student who does well is typically the most diligent student who does effective time management, who prepares all the questions which are likely to come in the exams and so on. So again, if you are a smart student, you are sometime able to figure out as to what are the particular questions and the parts of the syllabus which the professor or teacher favors or has a bias towards. And in fact, to some extent, a smart student can even predict the broad framework of the examinations which are going to come. And therefore, many students do very well in their bachelor's degree program and they feel very good at that point. Now, some of these students may continue to their master's degree program and they may continue in the same university or they may go to a different university. Now, in many ways, the master's degree program is a continuation of the bachelor's degree program with a greater level of concentration on the specific subjects which are there. So if you are doing a bachelor's degree program in computer science, you may cover a variety of subjects on computer science. But in a master's degree program, you may specialize on one of the subjects such as machine learning or database or programming languages or something like that. And in many cases, you may do a small project at the end. You may also do a non-thesis option for a master's degree. And in some cases, you may write a thesis for the master's degree. So in that case also, the thesis is pretty well defined by the concerned professor as part of a sub-project for his or her research proposals uh, on which some PhD students are probably working. So essentially at this point, the master's thesis work is quite well known to the field and the problem is well defined. Now, when some of these students continue on the PhD program, there is a huge shift. Because the main problem with the PhD is that you now need to figure out what is the problem. So that is certainly a big problem. So you need to now figure out what is the knowledge you want to create. And like I have mentioned in some previous videos, if your supervisor has written a research proposal on this topic and has got a well-defined problem, then this becomes much simpler. In some ways, it becomes very similar to a master's, uh, master's uh, thesis project or thesis but much greater in scope and it's more reasonable to do the degree. Now, if you are in a situation where you have to uncover the particular research problem, then there are many issues. First of all, you have to figure out what are the current trends in your research field. You have to do some out of the box thinking to figure out some new problem which will be of sufficient traction for the people in your community. 
and also in many cases you may have to figure out whether there are funding possibilities for this particular problem because in some situations you may not have money to do various experiments and use many types of computational facilities so the task of framing the problem for the PhD and the task of uh, going for funding is coupled together in some particular labs. So again, this is a somewhat difficult problem. So I think the main issue with the PhD is that you are trying to create new knowledge in the field and this new knowledge itself needs to be defined at this point. So this is where you have a problem. Now the second case is that you essentially make a shift from the book mode to paper mode. So previously you were reading books and you were digesting the contents of these books and you are giving various examinations. Now you have to read various papers and you have to think about writing your own paper. So this is a problem at a completely different level of the game. It is somewhat similar to the process of a person reading several books and trying to write his own book. So again, this requires a very high degree of command on the subject and a very high level of sophistication. So the second thing which comes at this stage is that you are expected to write everything in your own words. So when you were studying many books in your bachelor's and master's degree program, you could memorize a large part of the material and then you could uh, write these in your tests and these tests, if they are closed book and so on, then there is not much of a concern if you repeat some of that material which you have, have memorized. Now, if you have become used to this particular form of learning, then the PhD is going to be a problem because in the PhD, you have to write out all the things in your own language or people will say you are guilty of something known as plagiarism. Now, one more thing which PhD students sometimes talk about is the level of difficulty they face in terms of various qualifying exam, in terms of the uh, research proposal defense and so on. And they want to know why are the professors so strict on the PhD students? And the reason is that you now want to become part of a certain club or sometimes it is also known as a cult, which is essentially these people who have the PhD. So whenever you try to gain entry into this particular club, the people who are present in the club are very reluctant to actually let you in. So again, they put up a lot of barriers to entry, such as the PhD qualifier. The thesis is not just vetted by your supervisor, but by some different professors in the field who are experts in the field. So these people are also PhDs. So essentially, there is a committee of PhDs who let you in this particular cult or sect or cabal of researchers and then you are given this PhD degree. So again, this is something to keep in mind as to how the PhD came up. The PhD essentially came up as a degree which was primarily meant to create training in terms of research and they started in some of the Germanic lands. So again, as it spread throughout the world, it acquired some peculiar tastes uh, or predilections of its own and different parts of the world have different type of PhD degrees. But one thing is common is that all these degrees essentially require research and they require the writing of a thesis. And this thesis, as well as the candidate in terms of his presentation has to be vetted by a committee of people who already have a PhD. So again, this is what makes the PhD degree somewhat difficult in scope compared to getting a master's or bachelor's degree. And most professors feel that the bachelor's degree is a degree which is required of all people and therefore it is part of their professional work to give this particular degree but when it comes to the master's degree they, they feel it is a good training for the phd or it may be something like a fractional phd and then they try to give this particular master's degree out but when it comes to the phd they are very strict about this particular fact and in fact, they do not want to give this degree to somebody who does not deserve it. And this is their thinking as to who deserves a PhD or not. And this is what makes the problem sometimes very difficult because the problem itself is not well defined and the outcomes can be different for different people. And there is no clear measure as to when a person has done substantial work which merits a PhD. It essentially depends on the supervisor but the supervisor is somewhat petrified of the fact that what his colleagues will say about the degree. So again, he or she is reluctant to submit this particular PhD student's thesis till they feel that 
the degree is sufficiently strong or the thesis is sufficiently strong. And one of the ways they like to see this is through the publication of several papers because that essentially gives them confidence that the work which has been done is substantial and therefore merits the PhD from the particular university. So again, I hope this video was useful to you. And if it was useful, stay tuned to my channel for further videos on such topics. Thank you very much.